In this lesson, we're going to look at some basic uh, text handling using Adobe Illustrator. Uh, in the this is lesson six and lesson seven. Then we'll learn how to make text flow into columns and uh, how to apply styles and so forth. Uh, for this one, you can download the template, and uh, the template is called text underscore o one a i t. And um, it can be downloaded from the class website, or you can download all the files as a zip archive uh, and unpack it, and it will be in there. OK, I'm going to zoom in. And as I said, all these instructions are on the template, so you can go over them when you get time. The text tool allows us to produce editable text. The text itself is formed from PostScript or OpenType uh, or other font files and so while it's editable it is not necessarily uh, very malleable you can't really form it up or reshape it very easily uh, so you will want to keep your text editable if you think you're going to be changing it but if you want to do some stylization we'll eventually convert the text into shapes there's two ways you can create text the first is to click and drag and it will create a text box now the advantage of the text box is that it controls the flow of text so you can set up your text into um, a controlled area like this it's very useful for blocks of text captions and so forth the other way and the one that we're going to use for this exercise is just to click and type and this method creates text out as far as it can go like so. It does not wrap the text and so uh, it's best used for small pieces of text uh, rather than long pieces of text. Let's create a piece of text called Kojo and uh, we're going to stylize this into sort of a logo and uh, we'll start by uh, first of all selecting the type. You can do this through the keystrokes Command A on the Mac or Control A on a Windows machine and once we select it we can go to our character panel. Now if you go to the window menu to type you'll find many panels that help us handle type and the one we want and the one that's most useful right now is character. This will allow us to apply uh, fonts to what we're doing uh, in various weights and styles and also manipulate that. So I'm going to choose a font called Gil Sands, but when you're doing this you can choose really any uh, font that you want that's a good sans serif font. And we'll use Gil Sands bold like so to create our type. Okay, um, Let's change the size of this to something fairly large and your character palette will allow you to do that. You can either click over here a point at a time or you can do some pre-selected. Uh, this is where a scale of type comes in in pre-selected steps. So we'll make it 72 point. Move it down here. Now you notice I used my selection tool to move it around and you can also apply all of these type uh, qualities using the selection tool. You don't have to be using the type tool. So that's a pretty handy feature right there. Now one of the things we're going to do first is change the color on this. And so I'm going to click on my color sample here. And I'm going to use a color that is 50% uh, cyan and 100% magenta and zero black. And so now we get this nice becoming shade of purple. Okay. Uh, let's mess around with the type now using our character palette. And one of the things we're going to do first is change the horizontal scale. Uh, the horizontal scale is right here. It looks like that stretchy T. And it allows us to change the shape of the letters. And we can do some of this before we uh, change it to shapes itself. There's also vertical scale and usually would you, you would use one or the other. If you want to compress your type, we'll turn this back to 100%, then you could use vertical scale and make it taller 
and it starts to look more compressed as you go along. Again, let's go back here and make the vertical horizontal scale 125. And um, then we're going to arrange the spacing we're type. Now we could convert this into shapes, but I want to just show you a few of these things here. We'll start with the kerning. The kerning is the space between individual letter pairs and it's set up in the computer file that comes with the font. We're going to use the kerning tool right here, the kerning window, and change this to a minus 140 so it's going to make the type much closer together. And then we'll do the same thing between the uh, O and the J. We'll put the uh, cursor between those two and we'll make this one a minus 150. Now be aware that these kerning tables are set up so that each pair of letters has the optimum amount of space and so you wouldn't do this routinely but for display purposes we might do it. And now we'll put it between the J and the O and we'll change this one to a minus 130. Now you can go the other direction too as well uh, and put them farther apart but now you notice that they're all very close. We used kerning rather than tracking. Tracking adjusts the, the space, removing space or adding space uh, consistently across a block of type. We're changing each one individually so they just touch like that. Okay, let's go to the direct select tool we have our type selected and now we're going to create outlines. We go to our type menu to create outlines and this turns this into shape. Now uh, we oftentimes will set up our text uh, in our documents and then if they're going to be exported for use like a logo we'll convert it to shapes because then we do not need the font uh, to reproduce the type. If we leave it as type like this, then you must have the font file on your computer to reproduce it accurately. So we're going to uh, go back and create shapes. Now you see it becomes just a vector file. It's like any other shape, as if you'd drawn it yourself. Okay. Um, let's put a background on our, our square here. If we we're going to make a logo, we might want a rectangular background. So I'm going to use my rectangle tool and just draw into my area here like so. And we'll pick, I'll use my swatches for this and just pick a nice shade of gray. And you notice it's covered up my type. So I go to my type, excuse me, my object menu and arrange and send backward like so. And now we can see our type. Now also I'm going to use this, be doing other things on top of this background. So it's a good idea to lock it so that it doesn't get in the way and move around. Otherwise, if we try to select uh, our type, for example, we might select our background instead. So we go to Object, Lock, Selection. Now our type is locked. Okay, now we can dress this up a little bit um, by applying various things to it. One thing we can do, we'll select our type, is we could put a stroke on it. And uh, when you put strokes on type, I'm going to put a one-point stroke and it's a black stroke. You see how that works. One thing we want to do is put that stroke on the outside of our letter. Okay, see that right there? A line stroke to outside. And the reason we do that is because otherwise the stroke starts to degrade the the letter form. If you put it on the inside, then it eats into this part, which is really the letter form. So whenever we stroke type, and I'm, I'm not a great fan of stroke type, but whenever you do stro use it, make sure that you align the stroke to the outside. That's one thing we might do with it. I'm going to um, change this back to zero so we have no stroke. Oop, select my type first. Like so. Uh, another thing we might do is apply a little uh, uh, like a drop shadow but you can do this with the the uh, uh, type itself and what you do is you select your type like this. Now you notice that when we use the selection tool all of the type is selected. If you wanted to separate these letters you would have to use the ungroup uh, command right there 
and that would allow you to separate them and treat them individually. But we're going to keep them together for now. And I'm going to duplicate this by just holding the Option key in the Macintosh and the Alt key uh, on a Windows machine and drag and that creates a duplicate. Then I'm going to change the color of this one to black and then we can drag this one like so and create that nice little shadow. Now we really have something that pops off the page. It's an attractive looking design and if we wanted to we could go in and adjust it further. I'll just give you one quick example. There's two spots in here where we have this situation. So if I use my direct select tool I can take this point for example like so and this one like so and now we have a nice neat corner let's go to this one here too and do the same thing this one will be easier because it has corner points and notice we don't care that we degrade the letter form of the shadow part because it's hidden behind our letter. Here's another one down here that we can fix. And we would just select just this point. And if we want, we can change this back to a corner point like that. And there's our logo. It looks pretty good. So uh, next lesson, we'll look at how to flow type into some sort of larger document.